Essential functions. I want you to pull out the calculators. These are new functions we're going to get. Today we're going to look at exponential. Friday we're going to look at logarithmic functions, which are inverses of the exponential function. And then we're going to start doing things with them. Solving equations with exponential and logarithmic functions and the like. So today we're just going to evaluate an exponential function at a point. Determine the equation of an exponential function given a pair of point or two. We're going to look at what the graph looks like. We're going to determine the domain and range of an exponential function. We're going to figure out when if we move them around what happens. And we might even run into a word problem. Does anybody know the standard word problems that show up in exponential functions? There's a big one. Anybody know what they are? What it is? No, it's not x squared ones. No, not x to the fourth. There's a standard topic for word problems in exponential functions. Anybody know what it is? <coughs> interest. Interest, yeah. interest, so the business, the interest related stuff. So exponential functions, one big example of them is the interest that you can earn on your money, as long as your money is earning interest, as opposed to most of our money now, it's in stocks and dollars. Banking. So you're going to need to know what an exponential function is, what the base of an exponential function is, and what the natural exponential function is. That's kind of a weird one, but this book calls it the natural exponential function. Your standard exponential function looks like this. f of x equals some number times a to the x. This is different from what we've looked at before when we were doing polynomials because then we had x raised to a power. Now we have x in the power and a is some number. Well, what number is it? Well, one thing that's important is that a has to be bigger than zero. And a is not equal to one because one is boring. Think about it. One raised to a power. What's that always going to be? One. How interesting can that be? So we ignore that. We can use any numbers bigger than zero, but not one. So here's this <laughs> Because we can still use like a half. Yeah. A half will be interesting. <coughs> it's the one that just is really dull. So let's start by graphing f of x equals 3 to the x on our calculator and tell me what it looks like. Is it possible? 
possible to take this number three, raise it to a power, and get zero? No? So what's the range of this function? What are the y values that are possible? Anything bigger than zero. So how do I write that? Zero infinity with what? Brackets. Brackets or parentheses? Infinity always gets a parenthesis. Does a zero get a bracket or a parenthesis? It gets a parenthesis because you just told me there's no way I can take three, raise it to a power, and get zero. Is there any way to take any positive number, raise it to a power, and get zero? No. So in general, my range is going to be from zero to infinity. By the way, what is C? in this particular, yeah, it's one. You don't always have to have that number multiplying a to the x, but it's implied in there. Let's see, what other questions do I have to ask? I don't remember. What's f of negative three? And how would I find it? So that would be 3 raised to the negative 3. So that would be 1 over 3 raised to the 3 negative exponents. And hopefully you know that's 127. There are some of these I kind of expect you to know. Powers of 2 up to like, I don't know, 2, 4, 8, 32, 64 or so. Maybe even 128, you should recognize at least as a power of 2. Powers of 3 up through like 3 to the 4th. We kind of expect you to recognize those. The next one, by the way, is 81. Powers of 4. 16, 64, that's probably far enough. Powers of 5. You should notice those. Recognize those. You only need to know 6 squared, 7 squared. 8, you might want to look at and go, oh, yeah, that might be a power of 8. 9 squared. All your powers of 10, we figure you should know. The reason this is important is because we're taking numbers and raising them to powers. Now, once we get to bigger numbers, we're, gonna, we're not going to expect you to know all those. But just some of them, we kind of expect you to be able to look at and go, oh, I know that one. That's f of 0. Well, basically, I'm doing 3 to the 0, and any number raised to the 0 power is, as Chris just told us, 1. Everybody okay with that? <coughs> Bless you. And what is f of 2? Well, that would be 3 squared, which is 9. Exponential functions aren't so bad, huh? You're going, yeah, we're starting off way too easy. All right. Yeah. So this is the function we just looked at. We talked about its domain. We looked at its range. Where does it run into the x-axis? It doesn't, because there's no way we're getting a zero out. Where does it run into the y-axis? When y, uh, x equals zero, y equals one, so it has a y-intercept of zero, one. Now, what if I changed this number from three to two? Where would it run into the y-axis? Same place. What if I changed it to 100 instead of 3? Where would it run into the y-axis? Same place. All the ones that I just described where my number right here is bigger than 1 look vaguely like this. They all run into the y-axis at 1, 0, or 0, 1, excuse me. And they all are increasing functions. What's the difference between them? How steeply they increase. So the bigger my number, the faster it's going to go up. So for instance, here I should be, okay, I'm a little off. At 1, I should have been approximately at 3. I'm off by a little bit. But if this were 100 to the x, then at 1, I should have been way up at 100. So I would have gone up a lot faster. It would have gone up slower if it were at 2. Now, what would happen if instead of 3, I changed it to 1 third? Over the y axis. What do you mean by flip over the y axis? 
instead of having a positive slope. It doesn't have a slope. Well, instead of being increasing. Increasing, it is decreasing. Yeah, so if you were to graph g of x, 